Um, but today, no, for those of you um, will have uh, have got teenagers, can I just say, um, today is the second day of a three-week rolling strike. It's not like the PPDA haven't had any other rolling strikes, but they're into a new phase yesterday. Uh, it was years 11 and 12. Today, I know it's my son, so he's year 10, and it must be some other age group as well. But over the next three weeks, every year group from 9 to 13 in this country will have five days in which teachers refuse to teach them, and not only refuse to teach them, but refuse to set them work for those five days as well, I've discovered, because that would be breaking the strike. Now, I can tell you, um, because some teachers have expressed this in the classroom to their, te- to their classes, that there is by no means universal um, approval by secondary school teachers as to what they're doing, but that those secondary school teachers feel intimidated sufficiently to go along with this action um, by their peers. And school teachers have never been known, to be perfectly honest with you, being very brave at all, ever. That's why they're school teachers at the end of the day. I know, I can say that. I come from a family of teachers. Um, I wouldn't have been... None of them would have ever gone to the frontier. Uh, But I'm just... Yeah. So on that um, and on the ongoing sabotage of the New Zealand education system, we are joined this morning by um, former school principal, uh, former school teacher, um, and now educational consultant and insightful commentator. Elwyn Paul, and he joins us now. Elwyn, good morning to you. Good morning, Michael. Um, seriously, teachers have never had a good reputation um, because of the those who can do, those who can't teach line in part of George Bernard Shaw, and also because a whole series of people hated their school teachers because they didn't want to be at school anyhow. Um, has it got any worse or is it still that general disregard existed in our society? I mean, it sounds trite to say because people keep whining it out, Um, but there are thousands of very, very good, conscientious, calling, uh, motivated teachers in New Zealand. Um, They've always been hamstrung by the, you know, teachers who don't prepare, turn up at nine, leave at three. Um, and unfortunately, there's a lot of those. And in the past, the teacher unions have protected them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I think that, you know, that's a, become a big part of uh, the reputation. And, you know, um, they, those teachers most certainly taint uh, the, the system and the experience of children. Um, but at the same time, I think you're right. I, I think many, many more teachers should have stood up here and said, you know what, I'm, I'm not going on strike. I'm not putting my kids on the street for another five days after what's happened over the last three years, um, which includes t- teacher-only days, uh, obviously the government's COVID response. Uh, you know, at some stage you've got to go, in fact, you know, I've got a job to do and I'm going to get on and do it. Um, this, is, this is appalling. And it's like the mafia negotiating with a South American drugs cartel. I mean, the ministry and the unions are as bad as each other. Why are the ministry and the unions as bad as each other? And and, uh, this is why I'm saying the government allocates X amount of money in vote education. Mm -hmm. It's in the budget. That's as much money that the government, uh, as Chris Hipkins, etc., have actually put into um, the education sector and into the schooling sector in general. The ministry is hamstrung, isn't it? it can, it's only got that much money. It can really only play around on sort of conditions, can't it? It's got to still yeah, keep I, I the think, budget there. Yeah, I, I think that's true in the moment. Um, but if we look at a slightly you know, longer term, um, the ministry is working on this bizarre curriculum refresh. Um, they have uh, completely screwed up the introduction of teaching and learning, uh, as well as the assessments around the new co-credits for literacy and numeracy. Um, the, the ministry itself has gone from 2,500 people to 4,200 in just five years. Um, and, and so, you know, you've got a, a really not-for-purpose dysfunctional organisation. And, you know, that's probably part of the reason why the unions aren't taking them that seriously. Um, and, and they've also, between the two of them, they've had a year to negotiate. 
uh, it, you know, it's it, it is mutually appalling. Mm, mm. Okay, um, but having said that, uh, if they uh, the argument's all about money here. At the end of the day, it's about. Yes. Uh, I've read the PPTA's commentary from yesterday, and mm -hmm. for them, it's all about. Well, we're not getting offered enough money. Um, they complain about uh, standards and conditions and all those sorts of things, but the yeah. primary argument is our members aren't being paid enough um, to cope with the cost of living crisis. Yeah, and I'll take you back to your point where you said that a lot of teachers feel intimidated. I mean, this guy, Chris Abercrombie, who is the sort of acting president of the PPTA, uh, you know, came out and saying uh, after the vote, teachers had given us a mandate uh, to continue to negotiate and to impose you know, further industrial action. The teachers didn't give them a mandate. The PPTA leadership told the teachers to vote no. Um, so, you, you know, you then have a whole lot of branch meetings and paid union meetings, and it's, I've been in them. It's intimidating uh, if you, you know, ask a question or suggest that this isn't the proper way of going about things. You get shouted down. Um, you know, I, I probably lasted two months as a PPTA member when I started teaching. You know, I just thought, goodness me, this is, this is ridiculous. I'll negotiate my own conditions, thanks. And mm. I did from then on. Mm. But, um, the, yeah, but, and, and yet again, this is a really interesting, that the offer includes a one-off, I think it's $4,000 payment to mm -hmm. PPTA <gasps> members. So in other words, yeah. if you're a teacher and you're not a PPTA member, you will be excluded from receiving that $4,000, even though you're doing the same job and potentially you could be a much better teacher. Oh, again, bizarre. And um, that most certainly is something that the ministry should not give into uh, in, in any way, shape or form. I mean, the PPTA claims that they're the ones who earn the pay increase. Well, they might be the ones at the negotiating table because... Uh, you know, that's that's by design, uh, you know, through through you know, primarily the Labor government. Um, but it's it's you're supposed to earn an improved income through doing a good job. So you're probably right. Uh, you know, I'm going to guess that the teachers who choose to step aside from the unions are probably, on average, a higher quality teacher. Um, and, you know, they've got every right to every pay increase because they're doing a really good job. And they are people with courage. They are people who say, you know, we shouldn't be putting these kids on the street for another five days during this term. Um, if I was a year 13 student right now, uh, I'd be apoplectic. Uh, and, and, you know, I'd, I'd be seeking alternatives. I wouldn't be going back to my school. I wouldn't want to sit in front of a teacher who had done that to me. Um, and, and there'd be probably some fairly sharp discussions being held. Uh, and, you know, how schools deal with people like that. I'd probably come up second best, but I'd still feel better for having said it. Mm. Oh, absolutely. Um, and I have to say, losing the um, uh, confidence and the support of... of, um, of of parents as well, Elwyn. I mean, that's the other breach that is occurring with those secondary school teachers. Um, I'm just an ordinary parent. I'm Well, no, I'm not an ordinary parent, am I? But if I was an ordinary parent and my children were in year 12 or 13 at the moment uh, in particular, um, I would be apoplectic, let alone the kids. Yeah, well, I mean, I wrote a piece earlier on, you know, the fact that we should never put decile one and two children on the street. So let's take the best yeah, yeah, scenario yeah, good point. for a deaf child. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that they've got a mum and dad who are mm. working. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're working a couple of jobs each. Mm. They've probably got three to four weeks annual leave, not like a teacher with 12. Mm. Uh, and so you're saying to that parent, hey, either your kids are going to be running wild or you have to take a day's leave. And, and five days leave. You know, a week of your annual leave has to be soaked up in the next five weeks because we want more money. And, and it's, they've lost the room. Mm. 
Mm. And they already had lost it. 50% of kids going to school regularly, mm. 38% of Māori children. Um, I mean, they're driving downhill and, and pushing the accelerator um, while, they're, while, they're, while they're doing it. And I mean, going back to the ministry, I mean, their slogan is we shape an education system that delivers equitable and excellent outcomes. And, and as I've previously written, that's the equivalent of me saying, I, I, I'm a black American basketballer called LeBron James. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they are completely disingenuous at best uh, or, or self-deceiving. Mm. Um, and, and the system is in deep trouble and, and these two organisations are significantly contributing to it. Mm. Um, the um, and, and of course they can't be paid or they can't argue that their their standard or their quality of teaching is efficient because objectively when we measure New Zealand's educational outcomes against other nations uh, many yeah. of whom have English as a second language but are still taught in that medium um, we are plummeting like a stone um, yeah. so yeah I, I'm, I'm sort of interested in that self delusion the PPTA have always struck me as being Marxist and their rhetoric um, and their thinking. Uh, they, yep. always, they struck me that way 30 years ago. I can remember going to a conference and delivering a speech um, uh, uh, and, and thinking, my God, these people are actually communists. I didn't, it dawned <laughs> on me. I didn't actually know until I went and addressed the PPTA conference. But, um, yeah. but it, they seem to have, indeed their argument was, you know, they were, they, they were resentful that there were people who were earning more money than they were. I, I couldn't get over the sort of sense of entitlement. This is 30 years ago, Owen. The sense of oh, entitlement yeah. that they had, that they were the smartest people in the room, not paid enough, not appreciated enough, and couldn't understand what was wrong with society that didn't value them as being basically um, the primary movers and motivators. Do you, have they still got that feeling? Or have I just... Oh, absolutely. And you can see that now in their complete disregard for families and children. You know, they are so much more important in their own minds than these people. And and it, it, as you know, I, I, I help set up, I'm not involved now, but I help set up a, an, a, an online uh, virtual classroom school called Mount Hobson Academy Connected. These people don't go on strike. The kids love what they're doing. Um, it's, a, it's a very cost-effective private provision. But not only are people seeking out things like that, now, a lot of kids are saying, well, not only is my teacher not there, but it's not that good, you know, so I'm going to find another provision online. It's not just the rat bags who are not turning up to school. Um, it's a lot of kids who, who are astute, aspirational, mm. and, and, you know, I, I just think that these guys don't know that the system is already in trouble. Technology has changed. The ability to access world-class education in, through other means has changed. Um, and, and, you know, they're driving the car, as I said, off a cliff to their own destruction. Uh, I mean, I can see in my head, you know, PPTA members uh, running off the cliff like lemmings because that's what happen is happening. And if you're, at, say, a year 11, 12, 13 kid in school and you're thinking, what do I want to do as a career? Um, you know, these people aren't doing... The, the profession any favours and and okay so if, if I went they deserve a pay increase so how do you go about uh, industrial action in 2023 particularly given the last three years then uh, they just absolutely lack creativity um, they could have quite a way back got parents on side uh, taken a leaf out of Poland in, in 1989 uh, and, you know, I had dinners at each school and I had candlelight vigils and, um, uh, you know, create video footage from it, have parents speaking out about it and all that sort of stuff. Instead, they've gone 1960s divisive um, and it's, it's not working for them. Mm, but, but whichever um, um, sort of political or lobbying um, cause or process or um, tactics you might adopt, the problem still is from surely um, my point of view as having children of that age um, and every other parent is that I'm not convinced that I'm, by sending my son or daughter to a state secondary school in this country, they are going to receive a quality of education that allows them to compete in an international world against students from other nations in particular. 
Um, yeah. and, and I need to be assured that the education that they receive through the compulsory teaching uh, of the curriculum, etc., is going to do that job. Now, <laughs> I can pay those teachers an extra 60%. Perhaps we could match um, tomorrow magically. Um, mm -hmm. the, the teaching salaries of, of somebody might be in Australia or Canada or somewhere richer countries than us. But at the end of the day, we still can't be assured that the quality of instruction will be improved, can we? Well, it's the other thing about all of these actions that they're taking. There's, there's nothing that they've put out publicly and consistently to say our part of this is that we recognise that education in New Zealand needs to improve. So therefore, this is what we're going to do about it. We're going to ensure teachers who are not doing a good job and boards of trustees have concerns about that they will go through processes to either improve or, or move out of the system because every teacher should be of high quality. Um, they should be saying, hey, we're really concerned about this curriculum refresh because it just complicates things again. Um, we know that we're declining in terms of uh, literacy, literacy and numeracy and science, things like that. So we recognise that there needs to be a return to very high quality teaching and learning in these core areas and, and that there needs to be a stop to just throwing everything at the system because some ideologue thinks that kids should be told how to think. And, and so they've proposed nothing positive into the mix, just that it's stressful, we work long hours, and, and a lot of them don't. Um, uh, kids are worse than they used to be, which, you know, again, my, as my year 13 thing, I, I began ape about that. Um, and, you know, all of these kind of negative, uh, and obviously into the I and the, and the area schools are now out, you know, out, out of the circle, but clapping because if MPTA get something extraordinary, then that automatically goes yeah, that's to right. the I and the yep. area schools as well. Yep, yep, that's right. Um, I mean, that's the irony yeah. of it all, isn't it? Once they agree to it, then the NZDI will get it anyhow because um, they've got that sort of relativity. So it really is cloth cap stuff. But um, finally, though, um, Elwyn, I guess nothing's going to change with the current policy settings, are they? Can we expect this industrial action to continue into Term 3 as well? Well, I, I think they've kind of um, put themselves up against the wall, really. And, you know, it, it's now, it, it's not so much now a situation where I would think uh, good teachers shouldn't be rewarded and we should recognise that there has been a cost of living issue that has reduced real wages and salaries in a number of sectors. Uh, I, I would tend to be going, look, you guys have behaved like dicks. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not backing down. Uh, there is a limited amount of money. We've given you a very good offer. At the moment, take it or leave it. If I was the ministry, I wouldn't be returning to the table this week. Mm, okay. Well, um, so that means... Why, why, why reward bad behaviour? No, no, but I, I, I accept that. But harming of children? But, but there, there, there comes a point surely in every strike, and it doesn't matter what it is. You're right, the PPTA, point, the PPTA can't accept what's currently on the table now. The Ministry of Education have only got X amount of money to play with. They're not going to go back to the... I mean, if they, they're not going to go back to the Minister of Finance and say, can you give us an extra couple of hundred million, please? Because um, he's not going to give it to them. Uh, he's, he's set his budget, that's the end of it. The only yep. thing, therefore, that they could possibly play around with, surely would be leave entitlements, teacher-only days, um, less contact hour with actual kids, wouldn't it be? Isn't that the only thing that they can finally give up? I, I, I guess, but, you know, even that, so the NZDI managed to negotiate going from nine non-contact hours a term, which I'd have to acknowledge seems to me to be pretty low, uh, to, to, to 25. So what's that? Uh, two hours a week. Um, I, I don't know what the normal uh, uh, class load is, but you know that, that's that's kind of the improvement. So in a sense, that that sounds fine to me. There are two complications with kids. It means 
um, for a more significant time, putting a reliever in front of them. Um, and so you've gone from your very best teacher, the teacher who knows you, uh, the teacher who works with you consistently, the teacher whose parents know you, to, I don't know, uh, someone who's desperate for a bit of work because that's where a lot of relievers are at. Um, but at the same time, there's not a lot of them out there. So where are all of these people going to come from mm. and what standards are they going to bring into the system? Mm. Uh, it be the same with, with, with secondary teachers. I mean, a, a starting teacher under current terms, I, I think they're limited to something like 16 contact hours. So if you, if you employ a new secondary school teacher, you basically have to employ another half a teacher um, to cover the fact that they're, you know, not working a significant number of hours. And I would also argue that that delays their progress and development as a teacher because it's taking them more years to get that kind of 10,000 hours uh, in front of the kids and, and, and get their career up and running. Yes, uh, and can I just also um, make an analogy? The Prime Minister this morning was on the Mike Hosking show um, for uh -huh. the News Talk CB. Um, and Hosking was asking him about um, a portiki. Now, I don't know if you've caught up with that at the yep. moment. Yeah, I have. Uh, but the bar, yes, for, for our callers, for our, sorry for our listeners, a, um, it's basically a mongrel mob civil war. One mm -hmm. branch of the mongrel mob has shot another branches of the mongrel mob's leader, and now a portiki has been flooded by mongrel mob, ordinary mongrel mob uh, people and mongrel mob barbarians people. And today they've shut all of, and until further notice, I might add, um, Elwyn, all the schools in Apotiki, primary and the secondary school there as well. Um, now, the Prime Minister, in responding to that, said, and I quote, it's unacceptable to be in a position where gang tension is leading to schools being closed, and so I do expect that the police will do something about that. This is the Prime Minister this morning. Yeah. But... He hasn't said anything that I'm aware or condemned the PPTA and their actions, which are having the same and actually more lasting dramatic effect. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, it, I, I thought Chris is um, saying that this was a decision for people like the principle of a project, etc. So, I mean, if you go back uh, to, you know, it's a bit historical, but the Little Rock Nine uh, in uh, the US in 1957, where the schools were being desegregated and um, all sorts of people were kicking up a stink. And, but, but the government, I think they sent in the National Guard and they said, it's their right to go to school, regardless of, of what's happening, you know, uh, outside. Yeah. I, I don't know why the ministry and the government haven't said, you know what? Uh, it's the right of kids in a Potagi to go to school. Yep. Uh, we are going to send the army in, mm. do something yep. Yep. That, that gets these kids to school. I mean, that's leadership to me, uh, you know, not giving in to bullies. Yep. Uh, so, but yeah, Chris as well, you know, he's like, okay, so these, these kids from a Potagi aren't going to school. Well, neither are kids across the nation because the BPTA is acting like a cartel. Um. And, and it's appalling. Yep. I mean, I, I don't see any difference at the moment between the mongrel mob and the PPTA, uh, except I think that the mongrel mob are just a little more direct. Um, but certainly, <laughs> um, yeah, that's about it. Elwyn, thank you very much for joining us. It's always a pleasure and for your insights. I uh, wish you well and we'll catch up with you soon. Thanks. I mean, I, the kids just deserve so much better. Uh, you know, I, I feel as a teacher I've never worked a day in my life. Um, most days, I, I, mean, I couldn't tell you what I've been paid. That doesn't mean that they don't deserve good pay, and I, I'm sure at times I've had that. Um, but they've got to go about this differently. Okay. All right. Thank you, Elvin. Nice Thanks, to talk Michael. to you. Okay. Uh, yes, it doesn't matter how sympathetic you might be to the teacher aims and objectives and the way in which they are conducting themselves and certainly being held to ransom. Uh, good teachers also are being held to ransom by. Um, I've reported to you that one of, one, of, one of my children's teachers uh, has expressed to her class um, her upset at um, her beloved students, and I know that this teacher does regard her, teachers, uh, her students as such, 
uh, being used as pawns in a much wider game and having their education compromised. Um, and as a consequence of that, um, yeah, as a consequence of that, um, this is uh, um, she is, she's feeling that she is pressured uh, by her peers to take part in something that she wants no part of. And I wondered um, after she expressed that to her class, her um, how many teachers feel um, the same way. Uh, uh, sorry, I was wrong, by the way. It is... Um, I was wrong, by the way. Uh, it is um, year nine and 13 that will be off today. All right? So years nine and 13. And tomorrow, it'll be years 10 and 11. So years 11 were not taught on Monday. They won't be taught again tomorrow. It's all right. They're only sitting NCA level one for the first time. It's only their first example of external exams.